G'day folks, I'm Brent Carter. This is One for the People and it's deep dive time. And we're getting into one of my favorite all-star grape varieties, Nebbiolo, the king, the godfather, the Michael Jordan of the North, and next to Sangiovese, the most renowned and captivating red grape variety of Italy. Now Nebbiolo is known for its perfume, high acidity, tannic structure, and terroir specificity, giving it a well-earned reputation in producing some of the world's greatest red wines. It's easily one of the more challenging grape varieties to grow, as it buds early and ripens late, and is exceptionally picky about where it likes to grow. Even the name Nebbiolo hails from the Italian word Nebbia, meaning fog or mist, which typically sets in right at the point in which this grape variety is finally ripening. Now consider that for a second, one of the longest growing periods of a grapevine that needs very specific sites and soils, and it doesn't ripen until low-lying autumn fog sets in, bringing about a higher disease pressure right at the critical moment of harvest. And this is all before the rigmarole of fermentation, which is happening during the colder months of the year, and typical maturation times, which can often take years prior to bottle. The fact that Great Nebbiolo exists is a function of remarkable work ethic and a monumental dose of luck. Now, it wasn't that long ago that people thought of Nebbiolo as Pinot Noir's rebellious cousin with a real chip on their shoulder. And that's increasingly not the case anymore, as the rebellious cousin has finally settled into their mid-30s with a cool confidence in their own right. For those Venus adventurers out there, you may actually encounter Nebbiolo without meaning to. If you have a bottle of Spanna or Chevanesca in the cellar, these are genetically identical to Nebbiolo, but equally have their own stylistic and geographical distinctions. Now I'm gonna come back to one of those later, so hang around to the very end of this video for some hot tips. Now, in the 13th century, a document mentioned Nebbiol grapes, the ancient ancestors of Nebbiolo. These noble grape varieties found their home in Italy's Piemonte region, specifically in Barolo and Barbaresco. And the grape's popularity soared, earning favor from all the Piedmontese nobility who raised their glasses high and declared Nebbiolo the official wine of regal gatherings. Now, Nebbiolo is planted across Piemonte, in Barolo, in Barbaresco, but also in Roero, Gattinara, and a myriad of different other smaller villages. Identifying them is typically pretty simple if you keep in mind a few things. Color. Now, the first big tip here is the hue. It's typically brown-ish. Many people might mention brick or tawny, but in general, it's just kind of a nice way to say a little bit brown. Even young Nebbiolo wines typically look like well-matured Cabernet, just with less color. And that's the other tip. There's not usually a lot of color. They can be darker than Pinot Noir, but typically Pinot and Nebbiolo are comparable in color depth. Now the smell, often the dead giveaway for me is the use of Slovenian oak, which is typically more prevalent in Northern Italy. Slovenian oak often gives Nebbiolo a, a blueberry fruited edge, super distinct to, to French oak spiciness. This is because Slovenian oak is actually an entirely different species of, of oak. Failing this, I'd probably look for classic notes of tar and roses, along with lifted raspberry and violets. Now, on the palate, it's all about tannin, structure, and elevated acidity. Full from left to right, mouth drying tannin. Swish the wine in front of your teeth, get that grippy sensation, like you're munching on a stick of chalk, that kind of tannin. Often people rush into it at this point and just go, bang, I'm drinking Nebbiolo, but the structure really just confirms all the data that you just gathered from the color and the nose and sort of bring it all together. So just quick little checklist. Color, medium to light, little bit brown, smell, blueberries, violets, roses, maybe Amaro bitter herbs. Mouthfeel, high acid, full blown, face melting tannin. Tick those boxes and you're most likely drinking Nebbiolo. 60% of the time it works all the time. If you're looking to explore Nebbiolo, there are a couple of producers that I'd highly recommend. At the very pinnacle, the tippy top of the pile, if you can afford it, and particularly if you have access to these bottles, I'd be looking towards Bartolo Muscarello, Giacomo Conterno, and Gaia. For those keen to try some rising stars or those nipping at the heels of the big boys, I'd be looking at GD Vira, Roagna, and Produttori del Barbaresco. Although, if you want the hottest tip I can give you for Nebbiolo, and something I'd probably get hate mail for, the best value Nebbiolo you can get isn't Nebbiolo, it's Chevanesca. Remember that cheeky name I mentioned just a moment ago? Yeah, that thing. And I can back this up too. The annual production of Barolo and Barbaresco combined is approximately 18 million bottles. The annual production of Chevanesca from Valtellina is approximately 1.6 million bottles. That's less than 10% of the total production of the colloquially known king and queen of Nebbiolo. 
And what's more, most of this is farmed under what is known as heroic viticulture. And what's that you say? Well, it's farmed on a minimum slope of 30% and beyond 500 metres above sea level. Proper mountainous terrain that takes seven to eight times the amount of time to farm than typical land in Barolo and Barbaresco. Although for some reason, it's a mere fraction of the price. Now with climate change rapidly warming these elevated parts of Italy, I'm collecting these bottles before the sheer scarcity causes the prices to rocket. So a couple of producers to note from here would be Sandro Fay, R. Pepe and Barbican. I hope you have enjoyed this little deep dive into Nebbiolo. If you found it useful, would genuinely appreciate a crisp smashing of the like button. And if you're keen to chat to us directly, uh, or perhaps even our community of like-minded wine nerds, jump in our Discord chat. The link's in the description below. And I guess we'll be here and catch you in the next one.